Story 1. The Pig Farmer In a rural area of Australia, I once assisted a pig farmer on the farm. The farm was isolated from the nearest town and surrounded by dense woods. The farmer was an evil and violent man who mistreated his workers and his animals. He would often beat the pigs with metal rods or starve them for days. He also had a habit of killing any piglets that were born deformed or weak and throwing them into a pit behind the barn. He said it was to keep the bloodline pure and strong, but I think he enjoyed the killing. I was given the responsibility of feeding the pigs and cleaning their pens. The pigs were always hungry and aggressive, and I had to be careful not to get too close to them. They would snort and grunt at me as if they knew what their master did to them and their kin. Sometimes, I would hear them squealing in pain or fear at night, when the farmer would go into the barn with his rod or his knife. One day I noticed the farmer had been absent for some time. He usually came out of his house every morning to check on the pigs and give me orders, but that day he did not show up. I thought he might be sick or busy with something else, so I continued with my work as usual. When I went to feed the pigs, however, I saw something that made me freeze in horror. He was lying on the ground in the pig pen, covered in blood and bite marks. The pigs had attacked him and were still gnawing on his flesh. Some of them had torn off his limbs and dragged them to different corners of the pen. Others had ripped open his chest and stomach and were feasting on his organs. His face was barely recognizable, with one eye gouged out and his jaw broken. His rod and his knife were lying next to him, useless. I ran to get help, but it was too late. The farmer was dead, and the pigs had eaten most of his body. The police came and took away the remains, but they could not explain what had happened. They said it was a freak accident, that the pigs must have gone mad or sensed weakness in their master. But I knew better. I knew it was revenge. I quit the job after that and never returned to the farm. I still have nightmares about the sight of the farmer's corpse and the sound of the pig's squeals. Sometimes, I wonder if they are still out there, waiting for their next victim. 2. The Scarecrow My name is Sarah, and I grew up on a farm in Nebraska. When I was a child, my father made a scarecrow out of straw and old clothes and put it in the cornfield to keep away the crows. He said it was for our protection, but I always felt uneasy around the scarecrow. It had a creepy smile and a ragged hat that covered its face. It wore a plaid shirt and jeans that were stained with dirt and blood. It stood on a wooden pole that was nailed to the ground. I always felt like the scarecrow was watching me. Sometimes when I walked past the cornfield, I would hear it whispering in the wind, saying things like, I'm hungry or I'll get you. I would run away as fast as I could, but I could still hear its laughter behind me. I told my father about it, but he said it was just my imagination. He said the scarecrow was harmless and that I should not be afraid of it. One night, when I was 12 years old, I woke up to a loud noise outside my window. It sounded like someone was chopping wood. I looked out and saw the scarecrow standing in front of the house, holding a bloody axe. He had a twisted grin on his face, and his eyes were glowing red. He looked at me and winked. I screamed and woke up my parents. We ran outside and saw that the scarecrow had chopped off the heads of the chickens and left them on the porch. He had also carved a message on the door, I'm coming for you next. I also saw that the scarecrow had a human skull under his hat and human bones under his clothes. He was wearing the clothes of a man who had gone missing a few months ago. He was a hitchhiker who had asked for a ride from my father, but he never made it to his destination. My father killed him for fun and used his body parts to make the scarecrow. He had done this before with other people who had crossed his path. He was a psychopath who enjoyed torturing and killing innocent people. My parents called the police, who arrived soon after. They searched the cornfield and found a shallow grave with the remains of the hitchhiker. They also found several other graves with more victims, some of them children. They realized that the scarecrow was the killer who had disguised himself as a scarecrow to hide from the authorities. He had been living in the cornfield for months, killing animals and people for food. He had also been watching us every day, waiting for his chance to strike. The police arrested him and took him away in handcuffs. He did not resist or say anything. He just smiled and winked at me as he passed by. He said, see you soon, Sarah. I felt a chill down my spine. I still shudder when I see a scarecrow and wonder how many more killers are hiding among them. I also wonder if my father is still alive or if he has become one of them. He had escaped from prison a few weeks ago and no one knows where he is. Sometimes I think I hear him whispering in the wind, saying things like, I'm hungry or I'll get you. 3. The Cult of Darkness 
My name is Jake, and I was a reporter working at a news station in Texas. I'd been assigned to investigate a case of a mysterious cult that operated on a farm near Austin. The cult was led by a charismatic man named David Koresh, who claimed to be a prophet of God. He had about 80 followers who lived with him on the farm, isolated from society. He taught them that he was the Messiah and that they were preparing for the end of days. He also abused his power over his followers, forcing them to give up their possessions, their families, and their free will. He controlled every aspect of their lives, from what they ate to what they wore to whom they married. He also had multiple wives, some as young as 12 years old, and fathered many children with them. He treated them as his property and his army, and he punished anyone who disobeyed him or questioned him. One day we received an anonymous tip from someone who claimed to be a former member of the cult who escaped from the farm. He said that Koresh was planning to start a war with the government and that he had stockpiled weapons and explosives on the farm. He said that Koresh had also rigged the farm with booby traps and he was ready to die for his cause. He said that Koresh had a secret bunker under the farm where he kept his most loyal followers and his most precious belongings. He said that Koresh had a plan to unleash a nuclear bomb on the city of Austin if the authorities ever tried to interfere with him. The news station alerted the authorities who decided to raid the farm and arrest Koresh. However, things did not go as planned. As soon as we approached the farm gate, we were met with gunfire from inside. A fierce shootout ensued, lasting for several hours. Everything was captured on the camera. We saw flames erupting from the farm buildings as Koresh set fire to them. We heard screams and gunshots from inside. We witnessed one of the most horrific scenes in history as the cult members either burned to death or killed themselves or each other. Some of them were wearing suicide vests and detonated them when they saw us. Some of them shot their children before shooting themselves. Some of them ran towards us with knives and machetes, hoping to take us down with them. Koresh was shot in the head and died on the spot. His lifeless body was lying on the ground. He was holding a remote control in his hand, which we later found out was connected to the nuclear bomb in his bunker. He had tried to press it before he died, but it failed to work due to some technical glitch. From what I can recall, only nine people survived the raid, out of the 80 who lived on the farm. They were all severely injured and traumatized by what they had seen and done. They told us that Koresh had brainwashed them into believing that he was God and that they were his chosen ones. They told us that he had made them do unspeakable things in the name of his twisted vision. I was shocked and had nightmares about it for a very long time. I wonder what drove Koresh and his followers to such madness. I wonder how many more cults like his are out there, waiting for their moment to strike.